pandemonium reigns. Greedy, the 2024 football word of the year. Also, the identity of the 2024 Tennessee Volunteers. This team is gritty. When things don't go their way, they dig in. They fight. They, they, they're doing what they have to to win football games. We're not scoring a lot of points. A Josh Heupel-led football team is just not scoring a lot of points. 33-14 win over Mississippi State, who might be the worst team in the conference, at least on paper. Mississippi State, better than their record. Better than their record. They had some fight in them. They had some grit in them. Talent for talent, though. Body for body. I think we were just too much. I think it says it all when, at the end of the game, Heupel says, yeah, putting Nico back in, that was just a precautionary measure. Is that a nice way of saying we didn't need him to win. There's so much surrounding surrounding this game that I, I mean, it just it just I I don't have a ton of notes here. Uh, my my thoughts are a little convoluted, but I want to say thank you for hanging out with me. I'm Dan. This is Pandemonium Reigns. So excited that you're going to spend this little bit into my head and my thoughts on what was Saturday night's game against Mississippi State. 33-14 win. 33 to 14 win. You tell me the final score is 33 to 14. Going into that, I'm going to ask you what went wrong. What went wrong? I would I would anticipate more. Having actually seen Mississippi State play now, I kind of get it. I kind of get it. There are some reasons to be excited and there are some reasons to be like what the heck was that? To be frustrated or to be aggravated. Nico, let's talk on him for a minute. Nico was better. Nico was 8 for 13, a buck 74, and two touchdowns. Some people are all upset that the scoring play to Dante Thornton was an underthrown ball. Okay, I get it. Sure. He wasn't led in stride. But how long was that ball in the air? How much ground did that ball cover? And Thornton just made a play. Something he didn't do in 23. He wasn't going to do that in 23. He's better. He's improved. Uh, I still like to see that Nico hasn't lost his uh, willingness to throw it. He was pretty decisive. It didn't take a long time for him to pull that trigger. His other scoring play, he finds Squirrel White, who just gets over the top of the defense. There was a, a missed ball to Brew, I want to say, in the first quarter. Obviously, all Tennessee fans would like to have seen him come down with that and find himself in the checkerboard for six, but didn't happen. What we all wanted in regard to Nico was four quarters of play where he's connecting like he was against Chattanooga and against NC State and against Kent State, arguably even against Oklahoma. Where was that? That ball over the middle, deep over the middle to Thornton in stride in Norman, Oklahoma. Where's that been? The identity of the team has changed. It's gritty. It's gritty. It fights. It, it, it digs deep. It's, it ain't pretty. It's ugly. It's really, really ugly. And the whole identity of the team is personified in Dylan Sampson, who had 20 touches, carries, in the first half. Correction, carries in the first half. And I believe he had three receptions in the first half as well. So 23-ish total touches. Could be uh, give or take, right? Totally personified in Dylan Sampson, though. This dude, 30 for a buck 49 and a touchdown. And that touchdown, uh, uh, arguably the most critical of the game. Because at halftime, the context of the game had completely shifted and completely taken on a new identity once Nico was out and insert. Leroy Jenkins, a.k.a. Gaston Moore. It taken on a, a total new identity. So those, those first scores in the first half obviously helped us out, but, man, those ones that were really of value, Dylan Sampson. Just, just making it happen, man. Putting literally, I mean, have we seen something like this? Literally just putting the team on his back. When we did some things to shoot ourselves in the foot, 
you know, penalty wise, I would say we were a little bit better. I don't, I don't know what the stats are on that, but I, I mean, I would say we're a little bit better. Still not good though. Gaston Moore comes in second half, goes five for eight, 38 yards. He didn't win it, but by gosh, he didn't lose it. And that's all he was asked to do. Don't lose it. He goes five for eight, two of those, maybe three. Maybe all three incompletions were the pass interference. He maybe he was told to do that. Maybe he was hoping for it. Not a game plan that I love, but it is what it is. And in hindsight, it worked. It worked. Maybe the 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 coaches saw something on film with those corners. I mean, I, I don't know. But it worked. He didn't lose it for us. And thank God he's been in this system, you know, since since the Kennedy administration. So he knows what he's doing as far as schematic, schematics, schematics go, excuse me. Max Gilbert, he's back. All the all the errors that night against Kentucky proved to just be in his head. It was mental that night. Maybe there was, you know, maybe there were some difficulties with the snap and hold and things like that. I'm going to chalk this up to just just being in his head. Good friend of mine who is a uh, college golfer said that, you know, the 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 steps and everything is so meticulous, a, a golfer's and a, and a place kicker. You know, you get one thing off, it's sometimes it's hard to get it back in your head to 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 do what's right and and get that corrected. It's just it's just so mental. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think that's a great point. And I think that's uh, that that after seeing what we saw against Mississippi State, that's that's the highest probability. But who cares? He's back. He was knocking them down. What was he? Three for three? Let me check this real quick. Four for four. My bad, bro. My bad, Max. With a long of 51. Three for three on the extra points. Dylan Sampson and Max Gilbert. And that defense keep, keeps us in this thing. They, they just went out and won it, won, won it for us. The, the defense was absolutely unreal. Four sacks, nine tackles for loss. Van Buren goes 10 for 26, 92 yards and an interception. Here's the part that we don't like defensively is why put the ball in the air if you're Mississippi State? You're running right up our A-gap. You, I mean, you're just, you're just flushing through that thing. I, I do not know. Our run fit has been so good going back to 22 and Jeremy Banks. What happened? <laughs> Who knows? I'm not. I'm, I'm pretty much going to dismiss that one because that's just been so rare. That just has not happened. Uh, I imagine that, that Kirby Smart and company saw that on film and they're going to try to exploit it. I'd be idiots if, if they're not. Don't ask Carson Beck to go win it, but I don't want to get into the Georgia game. Not yet, anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, Davin Booth, Devin Booth, whatever his name is, 20 carries, a buck 25. Johnny Daniels, 10 carries, 63 yards. That's good for a buck 88. They, they almost ran for 200 yards on us. Mississippi State almost ran for 200 yards on us. Jeff Levy is the head coach. Who is he good friends with? Oh, yeah, Josh Heupel. Who did, the, who did he learn from? Oh, yeah, Josh Heupel. Who did Josh Heupel learn from? Oh, yeah, Jeff Levy. So are we really surprised that they ran well? No. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. Boo Carter and the defense. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Boo had a uh, Boo had a day on defense. Boo had a day in special teams. It is a, uh, after the his first hunt return attempt. I texted Michael and said he's going to get one. I didn't necessarily mean that night, but on the year. They keep if they keep letting him fill these He's going to get one. It was, it was the same thing with, with D. Williams a few years ago. I remember texting Michael and saying, he's, he's going to get one. He's going to get one. It's coming. He sees it. He has the vision for it, and he has the explosiveness for it. He knows how to follow the blocker. He sees it. I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. All right? Absolutely electric. When the offense is struggling the way it is or the way that it has, you know, we, we really don't know now because we didn't see a second half against Mississippi State or what would be a normal second half against Mississippi State with the lack of Nico. we got to be able to find yards on special teams. Defense is doing its part, man. It's, it's, it's just not, I mean, it's just, it's just doing it. Another game under 20 points. It, it does it again. Does it again. 
So it'd be great offensively if we could get some help from special teams. Obviously, if we can get some help in, in defensive regard of turnovers and yards off those turnovers, obviously. But I think the more realistic situation for us at this time, especially in a game against like that of Georgia, it's going to have to come off kick return and punt return. Special teams. It's going to have to come off special teams. All right, I want to end here. Just by looking at the drive chart for Mississippi State and Tennessee, I think this is this is really just for fun at this point. The whole episode has feel, feels like it's just been an absolute rant. But I just like this should this should tell you on paper just how good this defense is for Tennessee. Mississippi State's drive chart. Let's look at it. Punt. Punt. Interception. Punt. Punt. Their first five possessions walk away with nothing. It's not until their sixth possession where they get a touchdown, followed by a punt, followed by a fumble. Touchdown, punt, punt, turnover on downs. Pretty dang remarkable if you ask me. Now let's look at the Tennessee draft chart. Touchdown, fumble. Let's talk about that for a second. Samson... Puts the ball on the ground again. A guy who's been so reliable as far as ball security goes puts it on the ground again. That's mental at this point. It's mental because it's there's a pattern there, and it seems to be in the same place and space every game. So, and by space, I mean like time of game. All right, um, that's mental. And, and you notice once it's happening, like his ball security is is just is it's taking another level. All right, so touchdown fumble. Turnover on downs. Let's talk about that for a minute. we got to get more out of Peyton Lewis. If Deshaun Bishop is going to be hurt and Cam Selden is not going to be reliable or hurt as well, whatever his deal is, we're going to have to get more out of Peyton Lewis. You cannot go into Athens, Georgia, and totally rely on Dylan Sampson. I don't think you can do it. Going to have to get more out of Peyton Lewis. Punt. Touchdown. Field goal, Max. Field goal, Max. Punt. Field goal, Max. Touchdown, Dylan Sampson. Field goal, Max. End of game. Those draft charts should show you how good our defense is. And it's just really frustrating. You know, this is a random thought. Really frustrating that the offense is just struggling to kind of put it together. But I'll say this. Props to dang Josh Heupel, man, who I think knows his team's weaknesses. And he's not allowing those weaknesses to get us beat. I think he is coaching his tail end off right now, and it's showing. Yes, you haven't allowed more than twenty points all year, but you're obviously you're, you're sorry you're you're just not putting points on the board. You're finding ways to win, and it's gritty. And a gritty team is more than just a team that's pissed off, and more than just a team that's physical. That is a reflection of your culture and what goes on in the locker room. We heard it not too many weeks ago when Kiltzelman talked about Dylan Sampson. How he can't believe, he, he gets to tell his kids that he, he blocked for Dylan Sampson. Greedy means the culture's right. It's good. It's good. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for, for hanging out with me. I really, really appreciate it. Forgive me if this has been kind of a rant talking the Mississippi State-Tennessee game, but... Enjoy it, Vol fans. Man, enjoy this. We're 8-1. and one. And Georgia is beatable. They're beatable. It can be done. Our defense can cause problems for them. And defense travels. Don't forget that. Defense travels. And the last time we have seen Athens, maybe at its peak, Tennessee 2022. What's it going to be like come Saturday? Because they're not the same team. They're not the same team. Can we find yards off special teams? Can defense continue to... Uh, do what it's been doing. Can the run game continue to do what it's been doing? Can we get something out of Peyton Lewis? What's the health status of Nico? Can he just manage it? If he can just manage it, I'm, I'm, I'm. When I say optimistic, I don't mean like, hey, yeah, we're gonna win. Like, hey, we, we, we got a dog in the fight. We got a dog. We got a dog in the fight. All right. Again, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I really, really appreciate it. Make sure you hit like and subscribe on the video, on the channel. It does so much good for us, and we're super, super thankful. Looking forward to hearing Michael's thoughts on this. Love you guys. God bless. Go balls. Pandemonium ready.
Reigns. 